Hello everybody, welcome back to my new video and in today's video we are going to be making three uh, functioning, well, three doors that will have three different functions. Um, basically what, I'm, what I want to do is make this into some type of series where I do beginner tutorials for people that are just beginning to script and need a little bit of help with their coding. So yeah, let's get into it. As you can see, we have three doors here. This one, if I go into this mode, if I go up to the door, it will, oh, I don't want to be in select. If I go up to the door and I click it, it will wait three seconds and we'll be able to walk through it and it will go translucent. And after the three seconds, it will go back. For the next one, we use the proximity prompt exactly like this, but with the proximity prompt. So we click it after three seconds and it will and it will close back and then this nearly like this one just a tiny bit more complex but not really advanced um we have uh, a door that will change the color of a button and basically do exactly the same thing that we lasted I'm not sure how we actually fit through the door but that is something for roblox to decide so for the door one we're gonna want to just grab a part place it down as you can see in the workspace on the previous door, name it door one. This is going to be my door. And change it to that. We'll change it to wood. And we'll call this, because there's already door one, I'm going to just put test for now to these ones. So don't change yours. But for your actual part, just put door one. So this is your door one. So whenever you actually refer to it in the script, it will know what door one is because you you've uh, changed the name but make sure to change the name because if you don't change the name and you put like door one it doesn't know what that is so inside of here when you hover over it you're going to see a little plus sign there and you're going to want to click it and add the script and then add a click detector so the first thing we're going to want to know is adding variables a variable is just a thing that we can make just any word we want to refer back to into the script when we want to like say local which is how we make our variable and then we put the variable name here so let me put banana for instance um don't put this but this is just an example uh banana and we could put game dot workspace so this is the game that we're in and this is the workspace which it shows up there and we can put dot base plate so that's our banana right and then we can put base plate or it, exactly that's what I'm trying to say. So, you wouldn't put game.workspace.baseplate because you've just defined it over here. So all you'd have to put, put is put banana. And now that will refer to that exactly if you were to put game.workspace.baseplate. So they are exactly the same because we've just ref we've defined it here. That's basically it. All right, so what we're gonna want to do is make a, a new variable and we'll call this door. And it will equal the script's parent. And all that is, is the script's parent, which is the door. So if we go door, if we go to script, and we look into the parent, it will say, it will say the parent here, and it will say door one. So that's the script parent, is the door. We're going to add another one, which is going to refer to the click detector. So when we, we don't have to put door dot click detector all the time we can just put click detector or whatever we want to change it to so we'll put local dot click whatever you can name it remember you can name it whatever whatever you want but i'm just going to do that for the sake of this video and we don't have to actually put script dot parent and then the actual click detector because we've already defined the script dot parent we can just put door which is a script dot parent dot click detector and it will come up straight like that now i've done that we've defined our door and we've defined our click detector and now what we want to do is when that is clip when we click onto the door it will um set it will connect to a function and make it so the door will go transparent and the can collide will come off and after an amount of seconds it will go back to normal so what we're going to want to do is click dot mouse click so mouse click is just an event that we use for click detectors like any other thing so if it was a proximity prompt we'd use triggered if it was just a normal part so if we put door dot touched 
that is literally just when it is touched do this you know so what we're going to put is click dot mouse click and we're going to connect it to a function and make sure not to put anonymous auto build because that is not what you want what you want to put is function and then you're going to want to put brackets on the end like this and that is it okay now that isn't it um we're gonna do now what we want it to do is when it's clicked it's going to change the door it's going to open it basically so what we want to do now we now we can now we've defined the door we can put the door inside of the function so when we click it the door the door's transparency is going to be let's say translucent so 0 0.5 it's going to be half transparent which if you all this is is a property of the door if i went into the door here this is all the properties and we have transparency right here and all it is doing is making it more transparent and we could literally do that with anything reflectancy you know what i mean so door dot transparency equals 0 0.5 and then we're going to make a new line by pressing enter and put door dot can collide equals false so that basically means that we can walk into it well yeah we can walk through it sorry and what false is is called a boolean so don't just i would remember this just in case um true or false are both booleans that we can use to change a specific thing and we could also change our variables so we could put like local is open equals true or false obviously that wouldn't do anything because it's not actually doing anything but we'll get to that in probably like um next episodes and other stuff like that so all this is doing is making the door trans uh, translucent and we'll be able to walk through the door and now if we go to play the game now hopefully the door is anchored no it's not make sure to thank your door guys <laughs> so as you can see when we hover over the door it shows a clip detector and when we click it it goes transparent or translucent and we'll be able to walk through it so now that's good that's cool but obviously it doesn't close so what we want to do now is when we use a wait time, which is already a thing that we can use. So wait, and then it's in seconds. For other coding languages, it's in milliseconds, I think. I'm not sure. But make sure that you're doing it in seconds. So it would be, let's say, three or four seconds. It doesn't matter. I'd say three seconds. And now if you're lazy like me, you can just copy and paste that. And after the amount of seconds... The door transparency will go to normal. So obviously this is just, this isn't going to do anything because it's exactly the same. It's going to be translucent after three seconds, and then we don't want that. We want it to be solid. So we want to actually see it, and we want to not be able to walk through it. So we're going to change that to zero, and we want to make that to true. So all that's doing is the transparency. There's no longer any transparency, and we'll, we will be able to can collide. So can collide equals true, which means we can can cut we can coo coo we can collide with our object, which is the door. So as you can see for the first bit, we click after three seconds, and it will go back to normal. That's basically it. That's one of the first doors we have. Uh, pretty simple if you ask me. Obviously for you it might be a little bit different. The next one we are going to be doing is a proximity prompt door. So all this is, is basically, like I showed in the preview at the start of the video, is basically something will come up and when we press whatever it says to press, we it will open the door. And then after three seconds, which we've put here, it will go back. So basically all it is, is just changing this with a proximity prompt and changing the event, but keeping all this stuff the same. So what we're going to do, we're going to add another door. I'm going to go here and uh we can just quickly make the door obviously my character is a bit fat or chunky <laughs> so i might not be able to walk through the door so make sure to keep your door the like a good size for the actual players to fit in if you're going to make a game where you actually go through doors um all right so same with the last one we're gonna same with the first one that we did um i'm gonna call this door we wouldn't call it door one because we've already defined that so we're gonna call it door two now and now what we want to do like last time go to little plus add a script and instead of a click detector we want a proximity prompt so you can type it up or if it's already there you can just click on it 
and now it's inside the door so when we go up to the door it will it will come up with the proximity prompt so if you already know what that is you know what i'm talking about okay so now what we want we want to make the variables always make the variables first thing you don't want to start with unless unless it's a specific script that's easier just going about your day putting script dot parent if you're going to make a long script where you keep on referring to that later in the script make sure to use variables because it's base it is very useful so same thing local door which is the scripts parent and then we're gonna in, instead of the click detector what i like to call it for short is just prox so proximity prompt same thing and what we're gonna do like we did last time local door and local prox sorry equals door because we've already defined the door and it's inside the door so that's the door dot and it will come up straight away with proximity prompt you double tap that or press enter and it's there so now we've got our uh, variables linked up to the script we can start to actually make the function so basically like the uh, click detector we're going to add a new event actually it won't be mouse click because we're not clicking this time so what we're going to do is prox which is our variable dot and if you can see here this is our event which is called triggered. You can also do another event called trigger ended, but that's not what we're not going to be messing around with that. All that does is when once you've actually triggered it and you let go, it will do the function that you tell it to do. But we're going to want to do triggered. So done that. We are going to connect to a function and add these parentheses, if I can say it correctly. And now inside what like i said it's exactly like the the old one so if you want to be quick and fast just copy and paste that but i'm gonna do it i'm gonna go through like normal i wouldn't do that though because we are gonna add one more little thing into our script so it will make it better and more cool because we like cool doors okay so when it triggers the door dot transparency equals to 0 0.5 the door dot can collide equals to false so we can walk for it what we want to add is so if i was to join that right now it would go trans it would um can collide would be off and the transparency would be to 0 0.5 but what this is doing it's when it goes can collide this doesn't mean that the actual or transparent transparent doesn't mean the actual proximity prop will go to, go away and that might be a bit irritating to some people so as you can see we didn't anchor the door that is another problem <laughs> But as you saw there, when I opened it, you, saw, you still saw the uh, proximity prompt, and that's not what we want. So we're going to put prox, and this is another thing in the properties that we can change whenever we want. Dot enabled equals to false, so we can't see it. And now again, if you're lazy, go and copy and paste it like that. And we're going to use the wait time, and we can do whatever you want. Three, four, five, six, but not too long, obviously. Depends what you're doing, to be honest. And after that, copy and paste if you want to, and we can change that to normal. So zero, true, and then for the last bit, we'd put true because we want it to be back enabled. And now, as you can see, you can also change the actual name so it doesn't say interact. But as you can see, if I press E, it goes, the proxy prompt disappears and we'll be able to walk through it. And it will just, it will appear again and we can click it over and over. So there's that little proxy prompt door, pretty simple. And now we're going to be moving on to a button door, which involves a bit more um, like variables and other stuff because we don't want it to, we want it to like, I'll, I'll show you. So basically we're going to start making our door as usual and we're going to, as we've already done, call it door three. Let's, let's make a cool little frame like I did for the, the other one. I'm going to put here. And if you actually want to, what we're going to do for the sake of this video, we're going to make the whole thing a model because it's easier and it's just, it, it saves time later in the scripts. So I'm just going to do that. And obviously if you know how to make it a model, please do make, always ch make sure to change it to door three as well before you do it. And then um, if you want, make sure if it, if it's in a model and that model has like, it's, it's got a function inside of it. I'd suggest to name all the parts inside the model. 
But unless it's like a massive build and you've already modelled it, only model the main parts of it. You don't need to. Or you can add folders and just name them parts and put the parts in there. But I'm going to call it just frame because it's a door frame. And then what we're going to do, actually, actually, we forgot the button. <laughs> Before we do that, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to try to make it look like a button. I think we've got two, it's two wires here, it's too wide. If I go here and just put 0 0.2 just for now, and then we're going to make it a little bit smaller. And then, boom. You can also change the material to neon if you want. Makes it look cooler. And then call this button, because we're going to want to reference it in our script. Okay, so now we've done that. Oh yeah, inside the button, make sure to add a proximity prompt, because that's where it's going to happen. And now we're just going to select over it, and control G, which is going to group it like that. And now you see it's all in there. And we can literally just call this door, we can call it actually button, button door model. I suggest using your capital capital letters for each let uh, each word in your name of the stuff. It just makes it look more neater and it's just more bolder and you can see it better. Um, okay, so what we wanted to do, I'll make sure to anchor your parts as well. We learned that last time. And make sure to anchor the parts and then we'll go into the button. And we've already got proximity prompt, so all we're going to add is the script. And that means we can start beginning with start to begin with our variables, variables, variables. Okay, so we know how to do this. Local door. The thing is, this is where it changes. Would it be script dot parent? Because otherwise, if it's that, it would be referring to the actual button. So. What we want, what we want to add, instead of script dot parent, we want to put game because it's in the game. Dot workspace because this is in the workspace, and we want to find the model which is button door model. So make sure to name your models so then you can actually see it, you can find it easier, and then you can just put door three. So that's inside the model right there. So now we've referenced our door. There's no problem with that. Okay, so. Uh, what we could actually have done is just put local model. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's put. Let's call this local um, model. So now we're referenced the model. You don't have to do this. You could have kept it like the door, but it's fine. Um, and then you can put local door equals model dot door three because it's we've already referenced. We've already defined our model. We put a model here. And then uh, door three is a child of my model. So now I've got that. We're going to also define our button. So we can call this button equals model again because we're in the model. The button's in the model. Actually, we don't have to do that because if you look to your right or wherever your Explorer tab is, the script is a child of the button. So we could put script dot parent and that is the script's parent. So that's pretty simple. And all we need to do is make our proximity prompt. So local um, prox equals button dot proximity prompt. So now this is what it should look like. You obviously don't have to add this. You could have just put a uh, button door model door dot uh, door three, but I find it a little bit neater and just easier to do it like that. Okay, so now I've done that, that's out of the way. We can start with our function. Oh, we're getting the we're, we're hitting the 20 minute mark already, guys. Sorry for the very long video. Um I just want you to learn in full depth so it's it will be easier for the for, for the next tutorials and so Okay, so what we're going to do is when the proximity prompt is triggered, something will happen. So we've done this before, proximity prompt dot triggered, going to connect to a function, and then add your parentheses, I can't say it guys. <laughs> okay, so when it is triggered, the door dot transparency equals 0 0.5, the door dot 
can collide equals false so we can walk through it and the proximity prompt dot enable and just enable and a bit inability i can't say it is going to be false okay so now i've done that there is also one thing i'd like to add as you saw in, on the door that we sh we showed at the start, it actually the ch it, the color changed. So what we're going to add is we're going to add button because that's the actual actual button dot color, which is the color equals color dot free dot from RGB, which is just RGB red green blue, and then we will put our color thing in there. So because it's green, we're going to make it red when we click it. And change that to zero if you want to. So two five five zero zero, which is is a uh, is the RGB uh, code for uh, red. All right. Now I've done that. We're gonna add a wait time, and for three seconds it doesn't matter. Be be lazy like me. Copy and paste. All we want to do. Door dot transfer equals transparency equals zero. That's gonna become true again. That's gonna become true again. And what we want, we don't want to change it to any green color because we want it to change back to the color it was originally. So all it is is zero two two five zero, and that is the color it's on. And now, if we were to play the game, not yet. If we were to play the game, when we trigger it, the door transparency is going to go translucent. We're going to be able to walk through the door. The proximity of prompt is going to not be seen. And the button's color is going to be red. So it will tell us, it will tell that player, oh yeah, it's been pressed, so we don't have to press anymore. It will wait three seconds. After the after the uh, wait time, it will go back to normal. It will, so the transparency will go to zero. It will be, people will be able to collide with the door again. The proximity prompt will be enabled again. And the, the color of the button will be back to normal. So now we've done that. We can actually see if it works. There is there is one problem with these proximity prompts, and that is, as you can see, it doesn't want to work. And that can sometimes be. So you see how it's inside the door like that. So if I go onto the button, see how it's like that. You don't need to actually try to fit it all in like that. You can just go to proximity prompt, and as you can see in here, requires line of sight is basically if you were here. Like if it was, I I can't really explain it very well, but hopefully you get what requires line of sight really means. But if we were, if we turn that off, we should be able to see it through the walls. So now if we go up to it, you can see how we can see it through the actual walls like that. And now when we press it, it goes red, and we can walk through it after the three seconds. It goes back to normal. So yeah. That was our little, that was the final door for this video. Apologies for how long the video actually took, but I just wanted to teach you, teach you guys in depth. Um, make sure to like and subscribe this video if you want more posts. And uh, yeah, guys, I will see you in the next, probably the next video, which is probably going to be a next, a new tutorial for the series. So yeah, guys, goodbye. Thank you.